Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for HotHardware.com here with the Alienware Area 51 Threadripper Edition yet again. And after we posted our initial look at this machine and a quick little Cinebench run on it, the folks from AMD contacted us and noted that, in fact, our score of 2,900 or so in Cinebench wasn't quite up to snuff and they were suspect that the CPU in the machine was a pre-production unit that Dell was working with and wanted to send us a new Ryzen Threadripper 1950X chip to drop into this machine so that we can realize hopefully our full potential. So absolutely, why not? Let's do an alien autopsy on the socket, the Threadripper socket of the Alienware Area 51, transplant the new CPU in there and see how she runs. So with that, Let's first remove the GPU, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti from the socket. Little press fit, snap right there. We'll release the lock for the card. Pull off our PCI Express power connectors right there. Reach around to the other side of the card. Press the peg slot release clip thingy. Wait a minute, one more of these to get rid of actually too. There we go. And we're just about free here. Oh, wait, wait. Custom Alienware card retention bracket. Ha! Now we're free. Free as a bird. And as you can see again, that's the way uh, the Alienware cards are slid into the card cage with this back metal bracket that's affixed to the back of the card. Kind of cool, and uh, does a real nice job of securing it in the slot, but that's out of the way. And we are now looking at the large and in charge AMD Threadripper socket. Let's drop in a little closer. All right, so let's carefully extract the Alienware AIO liquid cooler water pump in block I'm uh, pulling it off in a crisscross fashion here evenly which may or may not be necessary but what the heck let's be careful about it this is expensive stuff in here Time lapse, anybody? Too bad. You'll survive. And quick, somebody make that God sound. Ah! No, I don't think that's that's quite it. But hmm, our uh, fan or pump cable, I should say, is tethered here. There we go. And we have broken free said cooler. Gonna find a spot where it will uh, tuck out of the way here, neatly. That's probably enough room to work, I think. Okay, there it is, that big honking chip we all know and love as AMD Threadripper. How about a little quick Threadripper unboxing? Quick and dirty. I'm not sure if you guys have seen one of these cases before, but uh, pretty cool carrying case that the Threadripper, AMD Threadripper processor comes in twist this way to unlock the power. The power, as we say here in Boston. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes. Rip here. It says rip right there. Yeah. Let's do what we're told. Oh, gently, gently. I don't know if you guys can see that. We're working with the genuine article AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. CPU for DT desktop, 16 cores, 32 threads, 40 meg of cash. All right, back to the box. So no question, this is sexy packaging to be sure. Oh, separates from the top and the bottom. Yeah, there's that. Ooh, careful, don't break nothing, Dave. Wait a minute. 
I want you to see the eyeball. So yeah, there's the eyeball. It's pretty cool looking. Pull the eyeball off. And there is the CPU. Yeah, beauty. Let's put that down gently and uh, look at what else we have here. A little uh, kit full of stuff. This is interesting. We've got the uh, Threadripper Schwag AMD sticker and case badge. The traditional literature pack. Very nice presentation. This is cool. This is the Threadripper Torque Wrench thing. Very nice. Actually, specifically gives you uh, foot-pounds of torque on the socket, which we will show you shortly. That tool comes with it, though. And then the CPU itself, which we will free from this thing carefully, I hope. Remove this here. Metal clip. I'm guessing this side. Pull up gently. Gently now. And come on, baby. You can do it. Yeah. There we go. So, Threadripper in its CPU carrier frame. Right there. That entire frame. You're handling things carefully. Slides right into the CPU socket. That is the carrier frame, SP3 carrier frame. And uh, let's flip it around here. Look at the size of that chip and look at all of those LGA landing pads. This thing is massive. Let's go drop it in the socket, replace that old chip, that chip that is uh, pre-production silicon with this here production silicon ready for prime time chip. All right, so here we are down close on the CPU socket ready to extract the old CPU. And if you look closely, AMD is very specific in this Foxconn built SP3 socket. Open 321, close 123. And each of these Torx screws are labeled one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and do what we're told. Sounds like a plan. And we will gently loosen these each in order. And now that those screws are released, this whole door pops right open, spring loaded, and our AMD Ryzen Threadripper CPU tray pops right up, out slides the CPU plastic tray from the frame from the socket. As you can see here, being very careful not to drop this sucker, we have a blue carrier frame versus the orange carrier frame. So blue pre-production, I guess, carrier frame versus the orange carrier frame that we're about to drop in. As you can see, not a lot of thermal paste on top either, just enough to create that round pattern. And our Ryzen Threadripper 16 core chip, full production version now sliding into the CPU tray, carefully in reverse order from which it came out. We push down on these two little tabs here, snap it into the socket, and then close the hatch. Now, they said open in three, two, one, so guess what? We close in one, two, three. So I am now torquing. Hear that click? That says I'm done. I go to the number two. Done. And three. Done. 
Beauty, that's it. That's all she wrote. We're gonna butter it up with some thermal paste and button it back up. Now I've cleaned up the cold plate and I've got a couple of small dollops on top of the chip just to spread it out a little bit more. Now, it's just like installing any other CPU. Just line up these posts. Now just remember a little dab will do you on that thermal paste, not too much. You don't wanna slather it in there and overdo it. And these retention posts are also numbered one, two, and three in a crisscross fashion. And I am tightening them mostly down in that order evenly. So now that our cooler is mounted and our RAM is also reinstalled, let's go ahead and drop our GPU back into the slot, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, into the peg slot, snap down those press fit locking mechanisms up front, and our little rear side GPU graphics card retention clip. And of course, PCI Express power connectors. And we're back. Yes, it did boot. It does live even after the autopsy transplant of the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X CPU, the brains of the operation in the Alienware Area 51 Threadripper edition. Now shredding Cinebench R15 at 3,015 Cinebench points. And that, boys and girls, is the difference between pre-production silicon and retail silicon in this system. We were scoring about 2,900 before in Cinebench. Now we're getting 3,000 and change, north of 3,000, or right around 3,000. And so, yes, that was the difference. That's what made the difference in our Cinebench scores. 3,011 on that run. Good stuff. Make sure you stop by hothardware.com for our full review of the Alienware Area 51 Threadripper Edition, as well as continuing coverage of AMD's Ryzen Threadripper and our full Threadripper review coming in the days ahead. I'm Dave Altavilla for hothardware.com with the Alienware Area 51 Threadripper Edition. Thanks for stopping by.